am there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread.
May be seated as we receive military honors. Let's give the Lord a hand praise together. He is, he is certainly worthy of all the praise and the honor and the glory. And uh, even on a day like today, we realize that God is still good. He is still on the throne. He's still in charge. He's still in control. He's still too righteous to do wrong and too wise to make a mistake. We are here for a celebration today. Come on, let's celebrate the life. The life and the legacy and the love and the lessons from Deacon Theotis Ben Rogers. Let's salute his wife, Sister June Rogers. Come on, let's just bless God for her. And the entire family, Wendy, the entire family, we want you to know that we are praying for you and that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. God is able to get you through even this. The program has been printed and approved by the family, and we want to do our very best to abide by the program. Um, if your name is not on the program, we ask that you would please not insert yourself 
in the program. Hey, we're the Lord's people. We know how to do things decently and in order. There are, there's, there's one minor change that I will make note of when the time comes. We will have an Old Testament scripture by Dr. Derek Flowers. New Testament reading by Reverend Greg Nettles. Prayer by Reverend Roderick Rogers. A selection by the choir, Total Praise. After which we will receive resolutions and acknowledgments from Kimberly Johnson. And I will return with further instructions at that point. Let us receive our scriptures. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We thank God for his holy word. The New Testament scripture reading will come from the book of Jude, beginning at verse 24 and 25. Hear ye the word of the Lord, reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, and now, and forever. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God, and the people said, thanks be to God. Thank you. Let everybody say amen. amen. Let us pray. God, we just want to thank you. God, I want to say thank you for my Uncle Ben. Because, God, we realize in your word that on our best day is three score and ten. But, God, you let him be here a little longer than that. You allowed him to live some overtime. So we just want to thank you right now, God. Lord, we celebrate today because we know to live is Christ. But to die is gain. God, we come praying today and rejoicing today because we know for the saved when you die in Christ is graduation. So we thank you that Uncle Ben don't have to hurt anymore. <laughs> he don't have to cry anymore. Lord, we know that he's in your arms, God, today. And we just want to thank you right now, Father, for the life that he lived. Thank you for the family right now, God. We're praying right now that you touch his wife, Father. Lord, that you touch the family, God, like never before. And let them understand that it's going to be all right by and by, God. So we thank you today for just allowing us to share our life with him, God. And you shared him with us. And we're forever grateful for the memories. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to the family of the late Ben Rogers. Life races well run, work well done, life's crown well worn, and now time to rest. Once again, death, that unknown but most rewarding creature, has called another servant home. Our emotions are disturbed, but to God be the glory. To the hearts of greater St. Paul, though the hearts of greater St. Paul are heavy, as we say, share the family sorrow, we feel it is our duty to share with the sadness in the bleak hour. We want you to know that death is a friend, as hard as the experience may appear, yet it is he, God, who assures us of a better life after death. Whereas we bow in humble submission to him who never errs. He knows what to do, when to move, and acts in the interest of his own. Resolve that we extend to the family our profound sympathy and commend to each member to the doctor who has never lost a case and cures all sorrow, Jesus Christ. Resolve further that a copy of this resolution be given to the family. A faithful man's journey ended. The race has been well run because compassion, humility, and love are blended. A starry crown is now won. Humbly submitted, Greater St. Paul Baptist Church. Dr. Jeffrey C. Franklin, pastor, Deacon Edward Keaton, church clerk. Pilgrim Breast Baptist Church, Camden, Arkansas. Pastor Derek Flowers, pastor, Reverend J.H. Hayes, emitters pastor. And I ask you all to be very patient with me because I have several, several resolutions, several. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to read them all. <laughs> I'm only going to read the names. Okay, humbly submitted the class of 1967, Beard in Arkansas. Let's get these out. <laughs> okay, respectful submitted. Uh, Reverend Jordan Jr. Pastor, humbly submitted Greater Center Star Baptist Church, Little Rock, Arkansas, Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Camden, Arkansas, St. James Baptist Church, Camden, Arkansas, the officers and members of Surrender Church, Reverend Roderick Rogers Pastor, Sister Veronica Smith Clerk. Humbly submitted, Greater Bradley District Choir, headquarters in Bearden, Arkansas. Humbly submitted, New Providence Missionary Baptist Church. That's in Northlet, Arkansas. Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, Stevens, Arkansas. The Reverend Michael L. Mitchell, Pastor, humbly submitted Shiloh Baptist Church, Camden, Arkansas. Humbly submitted Miss Essie Arnold, President of the Outstanding Women of Distinction. Humbly submitted Class of 1962, Ethel Williams, President. Humbly submitted Greater Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church, Bearden, Arkansas. Homely submitted, Washita County Minister Alliance, Camden, Arkansas. Homely submitted, St. James AME Church, Eagle Mills, Arkansas. Homely submitted, First Missionary Baptist Church, Bearden, Arkansas. Homely submitted, Washita District Association, Layman Auxiliary. Homely submitted, White, Whitest Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Humbly submitted, Hickory Ridge Baptist Church. Dr. Shad Porsche, pastor. Humbly submitted, the Church of Gang Street. 
humbly submitted Mark's funeral home, humbly submitted the Consolidated Missionary Baptist Church, State Convention of Arkansas, humbly submitted Pastor Wild George, moderator, Sister Gloria Johnson, recording secretary, humbly submitted Washita District Association, Section 1, Eldorado, Arkansas. Humbly submitted New East Side Baptist Church, that's in Eldorado, Arkansas. Humbly submitted Consolidated Missionary Baptist Church, State Convention, Arkansas. I will read one card. It says, a time for comfort and caring, a time for sharing warm memories, a time for honoring a wonderful life. Even as we mourn, we can remember the good times, be comforted by the love, and celebrate a life well lived with deepest sympathy, the Breakfast Club. The family likes to thank each and every one of you for your kind expressions of sympathy. The love you have shown has given us comfort during this difficult time. It is deeply appreciated and forever be remembered by the family of Theolis Ben Rogers. The family would like to thank you all for 41 cars and several, several resolutions. <laughs> I think we need to bless God for giving our sister wisdom. That's, that's a wise young lady. Can you imagine how long the family would have had to sit here had she read every one of those resolutions and cards? She, she got wisdom real quick. I saw it when it happened. Um, but this family is loved, and uh, when people are loved, they receive uh, a lot of resolutions and cards from various churches where they are members and um, organizations that they are members of. And so uh, we thank everyone who sent a card or a resolution, and I'm sure in their own time, they will take time to read each and every one of them. We are blessed to have Bishop Chester Thompson with us on today. He will come and give words of comfort. And then I need you to listen very closely because there's one change. Pastor Thompson, Bishop Thompson will give words of comfort and then we'll immediately move into our time of tributes. As a deacon, Deacon Rudy Galbert, and here's the change, immediately after as a deacon, we will have Wachita County alumni tribute by Ramona Faye Osborne. When Ms. Osborne is, is done, then we'll have American Legion um, Commander R.B. Rogers. Then as a friend, Harold Jones. And then the family tribute by Tony Rogers, the nephew. And then I'll return one more time, Bishop Thompson. Let the church say amen. amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. Let's say amen for the Holy Ghost. Amen. We give all praises, glory, and honor to God, our Heavenly Father, to Christ, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our guide, our keeper, and our comforter, to the presiding officer, and to all of the ministers that are here, and the set man of this house, Dr. Franklin, and to those who have come from far and near to celebrate this life and this legacy of Brother Theotis Ben Rogers. Can we put our hands together and thank God for such a man. Hallelujah. My assignment today is not to give a tribute, but to give words of comfort to this family. And I'm going to do just that because I found out that there is something 
about the Word of God that helps us to be able to make it through anything that we're faced with in life. And the terminology that the family uses is words of comfort. The word comfort in the original languages means to be called alongside of. And so we're getting a word from the Lord today to share with this family, to be called alongside of them as they walk through this time of bereavement and sorrow. There are many of us in this room who have sat in that particular seat that they are sitting in right now. And the thing that sustained us was the word of God. In my lifetime, I've learned some principles about the word of God. One principle is that the word of God that is conceived in my spirit and formed on my tongue uh -huh. and spoken out of my mouth, it has created power. Yes, Can I say that again? Yes, the word of God that is conceived in my spirit yes, and formed on my tongue and spoken out of my mouth, it has created power. Yes, and with that being said, let me go to Psalm 35, 37 and 5 yes. and give this word for the family that they can be able to grab a hold of this word and let it walk with them through this present season. Psalm 35 says this. I'm not going to elaborate it on it. I'm just going to mention it and declare it, and I shall sit down. The word says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. There's two directives there. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And then there's a promise, he shall bring it to pass. May the Lord bless you. as a deacon. Ben and I serves on the deacon board. <clears throat> you can't hear me? All right. Ben and I serves on the deacon board, and it was an honor and a pleasure to serve with him. Ben was a good deacon, a very good yeah. deacon. He came on board asking, what could I do? Yeah. And there was a little catch to that, what could I do? because he'd always tell me, I'm looking for a position. He said, I'm up in age, so I can't do much physical work, but I'm looking for a position. So I, I got the message. But he was faithful in all that he would do. You yeah. couldn't ask for a better deacon than Ben Rogers. Yeah. I know this family's gonna miss him. I'm certainly gonna miss him, and we're gonna miss him on the deacon board. Yeah. I said to you this morning, keep your hand in God's hand. And we will see him again. May God bless each of you. can do great things. We cannot do great things. Only small things with great love. Mother Teresa. President Ben Rogers, the oldest Ben Rogers, love being the president of the Washita County High School Alumni All School Reunion Committee. When he was in his element during the reunion at the banquet. He would strut in like a peacock, yeah. smile all over his face. And then he would walk over to the table that I was sitting at, collecting the money and escorting the people in. And he said, Ramona Fayaga, we did it, didn't we? And I said, yeah, Ben, we did it. President Rogers labored with the OCH alumni committee 
to ensure each reunion participant had an opportunity to allow the mind, body, and soul take a break from all the negativity of the world and enjoy a weekend that was filled with cherishable memories of fellowship with classmates, former teachers, families, friends, loved ones, and spiritual worship. He worked faithfully to make every reunion not just memorial, but a time of reflection and celebration. All right. He was one that preferred to play a synergistic role in the organization, offering assistance to the other members, but not necessarily taking the lead. He was great at delegating, finding the strength of other members. He tried to give every person a chance to do what they were best at. In other words, he believed and practiced what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. Our bodies have many parts, but the many parts make up only one body when they are all put together. And if one member suffers, Come on now. all the members suffer yeah. with it. Yeah. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 12 and 26. Under the leadership of President Rogers, the Washita High School Reunion Committee was successful in organizing and awarding a recipient the Washita County High School Alumni Scholarship and the renovation of a room dedicated as the OCHS Alumni Room located on the site of the old OCHS campus now known as Greater Bradley District Association. A light from our community and our reunion is gone now. A mentor, advisor, and intellectual who had provided guidance whenever called upon to do so. A deep voice we love is still. A place is vacant in our hearts. At the close of our reunion celebration, we always sang our alma mater. And today, I close with the reading of our alma mater. O-C-H, O-C-H, we, thou proud children are, thou are guiding star. OCH believe. Our hearts will yearn for thee no matter where we be. OCH, can we love none else but thee? We can't forget you. You are a part of us. Thou art the guiding star. OCH believe. Thou has the soul of ours so closely to thee bound. O C H, love and trust in thee we found. And when we leave thee, sad our poor hearts be. We pray that we will never stray far from thee. Your high ideals will keep as we tread to and fro. O C H, we love you wherever you go. We love you. See you later.
Tri-County American Legion Post 2021, Bearden, Arkansas. Resolution of respect in memory of Comrade the Otis Ben Rogers. Whereas God, our Heavenly Father, the great commander in chief of all the world, in his infinite power and wisdom, gave the high command and orders for our comrade Theodos Ben Rogers to report for eternal duty on Sunday, February the 13th, 2022. Whereas, comrade, the oldest Ben Rogers enlisted in the United States Army in November 1956 and he served during the Korean conflict, and he did so with dignity, valor, honor, and was honorably discharged. Whereas Commander Theodos Ben Rogers. <laughs> one of the original veterans that came together on September the 28th, 2019, to organize and form a new American Legion post to serve the Tri-County area and remain faithful and dedicated member as well as chaplain of post. 2021. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of Tri-County American Legion Post number 2021, share in the family's loss of a loved one. Yeah. As we, as legionnaires, share in the loss of fallen comrades in arms. May it further be resolved that we, as members of the Tri-County American Legion Post Number 2021, shall continue to dedicate ourselves to keep the memory of memory alive of Ben Rogers and all fellow comrades that have gone before us. Be it further resolved. that we as legionnaires shall strive to live daily, unselfishly, promoting a common goal yes, yes. as our fellow comrade Ben did. Yes. Be it also resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the immediate family and a copy will remain in the official archives of Tri-County American Legion Post number 2021. Honorably submitted this 21st day of February 2022. Raymond R.B. Rogers, Post Commander. Paul Long, Post Advocate. Thank you for being here.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I think this is probably one of the hardest things I'll ever do. I met Ben in 1963 at AM and M College, and the way I met him was my car was in the shop. And I had to go to Memphis that weekend. And another friend of mine said, I know somebody that has a car. So he introduced me to Ben, and he loaned me his car. And I went to Memphis. And when I got back from Memphis, I looked at Ben, and I said, what the hell are you doing loaning your car to a perfect stranger? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> That's the way he was. And we became friends right then. And from then on, I wound up moving to Milwaukee. He moved to Gary, Indiana. So we visited each other's homes quite a bit. And then, after that, he moved to Dallas. And then I moved back here to Camden. And one Sunday, he came to St. Paul. And he saw June. <laughs> and he said, who is that? <laughs> and I said, that's June. We were in school together. Don't you remember? I want to meet her. So after services, we marched up front over here by that piano. It was a piano then, I guess an organ now. But at any rate, I told her, I said, Ben wants to meet you. I said, and also, now he's been well trained. He knows how to say yes, dear, so you're getting a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out. And so Ben went back to Dallas and immediately started packing. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing I know, he's in Camden. <laughs> and so all I can say is that once he makes up his mind about something, yes, yes, yes. here he comes, regardless. <laughs> And, and so the one thing I never could understand about him, though, is all the years that we have known each other, never heard him curse. My Lord. Never. In all the situations that we've been in and all of the wrong things that have taken been done to him, you know, some of the things coming out of my mouth couldn't be repeated nowhere. But not him. He was my friend. And I know that he loved this woman. Oh, yes. Thank you. Giving praises to God who is the head of my life, honor to the angel of this house, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and family. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the son of Raymond Rogers, AKA RB, the elder or the eldest nephew to the oldest Ben Rogers. I've been given the honor to speak on behalf of the Rogers family. So there are some capacities that I don't know or didn't know Uncle Ben as. Don't know him as a brother. 
don't know him as a husband, not as a father, not from the angle of a niece, but I know him from the eyes of a nephew. Right. All right, ma'am. Come on. So I'm sure there are some things that I'll say that will resonate with everybody here as to how they knew him, what he meant to them, and I'm sure I'll capture some of that. One condition applies for me to go forward. You have to agree with everything I say. <laughs> if you don't, wave your hand, and Ursha will get your phone number, and we'll talk about it later. But for now, we're on one accord, and everything I say about him is going to be, again, from the eyes of a, a nephew. So there may be some things that I miss, but these are things that I experienced with him that I can tell you about. Uncle Ben loved God. And it's evident. You're not here because how bad he treated you. You're here because how well he treated you. And how much you loved him and how much he loved you. Uncle Ben had a desire for young people. He wanted the best for young people. Church, say amen. amen. He and Daddy were like Batman and Robin. If you had a graduation, if you had some type of celebration, I'm talking about as a younger kid, maybe older too, but as a, as a, as a younger kid, you graduated high school and you told Daddy and Uncle Ben about they were going to be there. And Uncle Ben, he wasn't coming with a lot of mouth service. He'd reach in his pocket and he'd give you something tangible. Not just a good job. He put something in your pocket to let you know you were on the right path. And, 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 and by the same token, if you weren't doing things so well and, and right, you know, he'd pull you to the side and put a belt on, boy. Pull them britches up. Now, I'm getting ready to get in trouble now, but I don't care. A grown man should wear a belt. A grown man should have his pants on his behind. That's what uncles, that's what fathers, that's what leaders teach young men. If you're going along with it, I'm done. I ain't gonna get in no more trouble. But anyway, let me let me move forward. He was a giver. He was an honest man. He was a man of integrity. And again, he loved people, particularly the younger generation. I'm gonna share a short story with you about about Uncle Ben and I, and I'm gonna move on. We love you, Aunt Jim. Yes, we do. I, I'm, I'm 58 years old. I can remember Uncle Ben at least back to age three. I can remember him. I remember him in, in Wichita, Daddy. I remember him. He always wanted to give you something to do. Like I said, he loved young kids. He gave me three jobs between the age of 10 and 15. Three jobs between the age of 10 and 15. Now watch this. He hired me as a garbage man. <laughs> he hired me as a truck driver. <laughs> and number three, as a roofer. My daddy taught me how to put shingles on a roof. Daddy and I, we did that. We, we roofed one of daddy's houses. And Uncle Ben had to put a roof on his house. So he figured out, he, he knew that I knew how to lay shingles, so he hired me. So real quick, let me get through this. At about age 10, I would uh, often visit he and my Aunt Evelyn. I would, I would spend time with them. And he'd say, Tony, I pay you 25 cents to empty that garbage can every time it gets full. You all should have saw me trying to find stuff to put in that garbage can so I could fill that garbage can up. <laughs> 
45 years ago, you could buy a lot with 25 cents. <laughs> Couple pack of now ladles of snow cone could still have like 10 cents left over. <laughs> Teaching me responsibility. Couple years went by, I would often travel with him on the road. A lot of you know, he was a truck driver. He would take me with him on the road occasionally. So we, we wound up in Detroit. <laughs> I'm gonna tell them on this, Uncle Ben, sleeping on picnic tables. <laughs> Not in a park, but in, a tr in one of the truck stops that he kind of ran and on. But anyway, Tony, I got something for you to do. I want you to sweep those trailers out and, and park them. I said, okay. Took me about a half an hour to park a trailer. Anybody that ever driven a truck, they know you turn to the right, the trailer go to the left, you turn to the left, the trailer go to the right. I couldn't figure that thing out. I see him in the window laughing at me, but he paid me $75. I swept out about four trailers and parked maybe one. That's all I could park was one. But again, teaching me responsibility, accountability, giving me something to do, letting me know that, hey, you need to, you need to work to provide for yourself. These are all the things. And he was a teacher by trade as well. Until you gave me five minutes. I'm probably at three and a half, right? I'm, I'm getting there. Go ahead. Okay. And then the last job, and, and I really enjoyed this with him. We got on top of his roof and we laid those shingles. We laid those shingles. Yes, my Lord, my Lord. Teaching me how to be on time to be accountable. If he was coming to pick me up at 10 o'clock, that didn't mean me being down the street playing basketball. That meant me being in the house waiting on him to come pick me up. So again, he was a teacher just by nature. I love my uncle man, and, and I'm hoping and praying that I said something that, that, that encapsulate his being, his love, and, and just him as a person. So on behalf of the Rogers family, we thank each of you and every one of you for being here. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your love that, that you receive from Uncle Ben and that you love that you share with Uncle Ben. We're going to miss him, but again, the world is a better place. At least here, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be selfish. My world is a better place. Amen. Right there. Tony Rogers is a better person. Not only of him, but my daddy. I love my daddy. All right, he and Uncle Ben, boy, they get together. And I'm ready to get in trouble, but I'm ready to get out the way. Those two jokers, they couldn't stand being together. They couldn't stand being apart. <laughs> so what I decided to do, I got me a pencil and a pad. I just became the referee, and I'd mark down who was winning the argument or what have you. But they, they love one another. And I'm so happy to have had both of them in my life and all of you in my life. God bless you. God keep you. That's all I got. That's all I have. God bless you. Amen. What beautiful words. Wasn't that beautiful? Amen. Such wonderful tributes from everyone. And um, to sum it up, just a wonderful tribute about manhood and how men should teach the younger generations. How beautiful. Let's give God a praise for him. My assignment is done. Thank you so much for allowing me to serve you on today. Thank you, Sister June, for asking us to come. And uh, we've been honored to be a part of this celebration. God bless you, Sister Wendy, one of our dear members. Um, the choir is going to come and bless us with oh how precious as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord from our friend and our brother, Dr. Jeffrey Franklin, who is the pastor of this house. Come on, let's bless God for him. I want you I want you to pray for him. It's not an easy job to have to eulogize such a good deacon. Oh, yes. And so we want you to pray for him that God gives him strength. And um, let us hear the word of the Lord after the singing of the selection. To everyone here, thanks for being here. Ben is a wonderful person. Man. We 
clicked when we saw each other. But it took me a minute. I said, now, nah, come on. I said, Harold Jones, I ain't talking to nobody. He said, yes, you are. You gonna call him like I told you. I said, you my daddy. He said, yeah. He started from there. That was it. My husband loved good music. He loved good worship music. Not just anything. He was particular. And he dubbed, oh, how precious. And he would tell me, girl, uh, uh, I need you to, you know, y'all sung that. I said, well, we tried. Come on, y'all. We're going we gonna to praise the Lord on Ohio worship. When you're lonely, heart filled with despair, remember God cares. And when you're in doubt, can't find your way out, he will see you through. Just call. Yeah. 
glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Bless his name. We greet you in the grace of God. And the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We greet you in the spirit of agreement. Uh, with the ministry of our songstress. That the name of Jesus Christ is indeed precious. Somebody ought to say, oh, how precious. If you only knew what the Lord had done for me, uh, you would know that his name is indeed precious. Uh, protocol, protocol has been established. We are thankful for all the Reverend clergy that are with us. Thank God for all the officers of the church. The members uh, without respect of individual churches to all the church age. We thank God for you, your prayers and your support for this Rogers family during this time of bereavement. Like uh, Brother Jones, um, I met Deacon Rogers chasing after June. <laughs> I got to I got to know him before I came here as pastors when June would be on program at the state conventions and the district association meetings. She would be ministering up there, ministering her heart out. And you, you wouldn't be able to see June, uh, Dean Rogers until uh, after the program was over. Folks would be leaving, going that way, and Ben would be coming this way. <laughs> Every, everywhere she went, he was right there. And so we pray, pay tribute today to a faithful husband that loved and supported his wife. And when June introduced me to Ben, it wasn't it wasn't hard to see that he was, uh, she was the apple of his eye. And they had a very special bond. Coming here, I got to know him a little better as an officer of the church, a servant um, that loved the Lord and didn't mind laboring for the Lord. Deacon Rogers. But nephew, he loved talking about his truck. I later found out that he was also a teacher, a military man, and some of the other accolades, but he loved to talk about his trucking. Oh, yes. How trucking had taken him all over the country in different places. I'm mindful of one trucking story. He found out I was from Cleveland, and he began to talk with me about the mountains in Pennsylvania, our neighboring state, and how that on one occasion he was taking a heavy load um, through the mountains of Pennsylvania. And, as, and uh, it was a very snowy occasion. And as, uh, as he was driving through the mountains yes, um, with that heavy load, um, his, you know, being had a heavy foot. You know, <laughs> he, 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 uh, and he got, he, he got out of control. And uh, as he tells it, you know, I, and I know that um, the highways and the mountains in Pennsylvania, they have what's called runoff ramps, run -off, runaway ramps. I call them out of control ramps. So that when, you, when you're coming down the hill too fast, find yourself getting out of control there would soon be an exit ramp it's like a like an exit and when you soon as you come off it would get real steep so even when you're going real fast the steepness of the road will slow you down and, and save you from disaster uh, Ben described that occasion where he um, 
he got out of control driving Pennsylvania highways. Ben drove the, the church bus here um, faithfully. And, uh, faithfully and fast. <laughs> occasions when we would be invited to afternoon programs um, Ben would drive the, the church bus and you know I, I drive um, a pretty fast car too and I w was in the habit of um, closing service here and running over to the apartment and changing shirts and changing so that I could get to where we were going on one occasion, we were going down on the other side of Texarkana, and I, I knew I had, I had time to catch up with. It's a church bus. Yes, <laughs> and, uh, I went in, I changed up, and um, jumped back out on the highway, and I'm, I'm running pretty good clip. And I said, "Well, I don't, I don't see him." Come on down through uh, uh, through Ralston. Should I catch him here somewhere? No Ben. <laughs> like that. Um, got in the hope to the highway. Well, I stretched out that Mercedes. I know I'm gonna run him down now. <laughs> By the time I saw Ben, they were they were in the fellowship hall. <laughs> anyway. I didn't understand, uh, Mother Hell, I didn't understand until one time I went with their senior trip. Um, uh, they would go annually to Greater St. Paul, particularly the women. Men would go sometimes, too, to this restaurant. Um, it's out of town, somewhere in Louisiana. So this time I got on the bus with them. <laughs> And um, Ben, Sister William, Ben took off with that truck. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting over here on the, on the other side in the front row. And he began to um, accelerate. <laughs> I started squeezing the rail in, in front of me. He will be greatly missed in this church family, in this community, and in the family of the Rogers. Um, over the last week, um, I have been present at the funeralization of two preachers and now a deacon. Um, and so in the preparation of this eulogy, I found a text that was medicinal, metaphorical miraculous and mysterious is found in the message of Paul. As I was meditating on that message after hearing um, of our brother's passing, I thought about that, how that this text was medicinal. It, Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 began to be therapeutic in the preparation process of eulogizing my friend. 
metaphorical because the principles in this text were transferable, miraculous, because the power of Paul's words were targeted and finally mysterious because the precepts of which Paul speaks are beyond man's thoughts. Talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And Paul describes the approach to ministering to the believers at Corinth. And as he addresses this church, you find the manner in which he addressed them was special. He, um, he opened the chapter by saying, I come not with enticing words. Nothing fancy, um, no big words, no lofty philosophical ideas, no, no creative concept, not trying to demonstrate or reflect man's wisdom. He said, I come determined to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. Uh, that sounds a lot like Deacon Ben Rogers, who served not only as the deacon, but served as a Sunday school teacher, a faithful Sunday school teacher. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't try to be a theologian when he taught Sunday school. He didn't try to interject uh, his own thoughts or ideas into the text. He, he simply taught the lesson as it was printed. Yet with such conviction that you could tell that, that what he was teaching was not only coming from his head, but that it had found his way into his heart. And he would try to pour out in simplicity, not trying to be any more uh, than he was. That's kind of the manner uh, that Paul addressed this church at Corinth. You see, not only the manner, but his motives. Uh, he said, I come not with enticing words. That word enticing uh, means to persuade. Paul says, I come not trying to persuade. I'm not trying to sell anything, in other words. I come to you. I come uh, to demonstrate the spirit of power. Not long, about the second year of my pastoring here at Greater St. Paul, we have a, a 12 o'clock Bible study and a 6 o'clock Bible study. And it was often... Um, in preparation for the 12 o'clock Bible study that I'd spend time in the office because lunch was a part of, the, of that fellowship. And, um, and I'm, uh, when, when studying, uh, Bishop Thompson, I'm a messy studier. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of unorganized. I have open books on top of open books and papers and notebooks, sticky notes here and sticky notes there, and I kind of junk it up uh, trying to find um, a deeper understanding um, of the word of God. One day, Deacon Rogers knocked on my door, and he came in, and he sat down before my junky desk, and he said, Reverend, I've been watching you, um, you know. I've been paying attention, and I, and I got one question. I, I said, what is it? What is it, Deacon? You know, he had that, that funny grin, you know, when he had something. <laughs> he said to me, do you think it's really worth it? Do you think that that's going to really make a difference? As he looked at my desk and my notes and he, he saw me labor, he said, do you, 
Do you really think we're in a time where people are stubborn and mean, careless, self-centered? He said, do you think that these lessons you bring, and do you think they're really, they're really going to make a difference? Oh, my brothers and sisters, that conversation three or four years ago still haunts me today. Um, he, wasn't, he wasn't being critical. He was concerned. Deacon Rogers was in pursuit of something real. He, he wanted to see Christ in the lives of the Christians. He wanted, my brothers and sisters, people to have a real relationship with God. As was pointed out here today, especially the children. He wanted to see them get connected with the word of God and to begin to try this Christ that we talk about. Yes, my brothers and sisters, he will be dearly missed. He was one of those that wanted to see Christians love one another. He wanted, he wanted to see us striving to obey the command of Christ that we love one another as we love ourselves. Uh, his motivation was clear. He wasn't trying to entice nobody. He was motivated, my brothers and sisters, by the change that Christ had brought about in his life. You see, he didn't talk uh, something for you that he didn't live for himself. Let me put it in another way. He didn't only talk the talk, but he walked the walk. He, he had that concern, that genuine concern for Christianity. Well, the manner of Paul is clear in this presentation to the church at Corinth. His motive um, was pure. And then you can experience the power of his might. Paul says, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. See, when Paul came to Corinth, he had just left Athens. And at Athens, he encountered a, a mountainous task. There at Athens, along, the great, along with the great philosophers, and the great thinkers of that age, Paul found himself on Mars Hill. And he, as he explored the city there in Athens, he began to observe tombs and statues dedicated to every kind of God. And he came across one tomb that was marked to the unknown God. Paul said, this is my chance. And Paul began to talk about Jesus Christ, how that he was the son of the living God and the savior of the world. Paul talked about the power that he had in Christ. He talked about Jesus Christ and him crucified, raising up for the salvation of souls. And Paul was somewhat defeated when he left Athens because there were very few converts. And so when it comes to Corinth, it's with the heaviness of this spirit. And Paul says, I come to you in weakness. He had might, but it wasn't because he was strong. It wasn't because he was secure. It wasn't because he was seasoned. It wasn't because he was successful. It wasn't because he was smart. It wasn't because he was sharp. It wasn't because he was sensible. It wasn't because he was saved, not even because he was sanctified, not even because he was satisfied in Christ, but he had power because of the Lord. He embraced the spirit of Zechariah who said, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. He addressed this church uh, with the power of Christ. I'm not 
so sure uh, on this point um, about it being metaphorically related to Deacon Rogers. I don't, I don't think Deacon Rogers feared anything. I don't, I, I didn't get to know him as well as many of you. I, I think we had a wonderful relationship. As a matter of fact, I pray to God that I can be as effective a pastor and have been as effective a pastor to him as he was a deacon to me. I pray that my station in the spirit of God and my, my strive to fulfill my calling is as successful as a pastor as I saw his as a deacon. Uh, I'm not so sure that, uh, uh, that Deacon Rogers feared anything. I, uh, he, drove the, he drove the bus, as we, as we said, faithfully. And part of his responsibility was to pick up the young people on our Tuesday night fellowship. He drove me in and out of every neighborhood around this community, around this city, going, going to get them wherever they were. And I found out uh, not before long that he knew everyone he picked up knew what was going on in their lives. He knew their families. He knew their neighborhoods. He knew who was going to be late. <laughs> he, he knew how long he had to wait for. Him. But he wasn't afraid. He, there were times, I'm told by others, that there would, there would get to be a ruckus on the bus. You know, Christian children can be wild sometimes. <laughs> Y'all got to raise, y'all got to do a better job of raising <laughs> these, these godly children. Eh? When they would, when they would be a, a rook of some of the aides that would ride the bus with them would come into the youth meeting. They would be all disturbed and all, you, you know, upset. That, that these kids, these kids, they, they, Deacon Rogers was just as smooth. Came on in, took his seat. I said, Deacon Rogers, they talk about what? Oh, they all right. <laughs> they, they all right. He, he didn't fear. Um, he didn't fear anything. Um, he was concerned not only about his method, his motive. He was not only um, concerned about his might, but he was mainly concerned about the message of the gospel that he lived. That's where Paul is going in this second chapter as he began in verse uh, 6 and 7 to talk about, uh, amen, this mysterious wisdom of God. He begins to compare the wisdom of man to the wisdom of God. The conclusion of that comparison is that there are some things um, that the wisdom of this world can't comprehend. You know, we were pretty smart um, in this world, we've learned, we've, we've been able to overcome many mysteries um, in life. Just for example, there was a period um, that man's transportation was limited to the ground. And some, some brilliant minds began to notice the birds and how they fly and how they would take off and the position of their wings when they would take off and then how they would glide. How they would come to a landing and they would turn their wings the other way as they began to descend and land. And they took this knowledge and this mystery and began to apply it. And before long, man is flying like a bird. The mysteries of this world uh, some of them are great mysteries, but they don't begin to compare with the mysteries of God. Paul described uh, the things that man cannot comprehend as the, wis the wisdom of God in a mystery. The issues of salvation, the issues of our soul's destination. He referred to it as the mysteries um, of God. He declared that they were even hidden mysteries. I'm, I'm about through. None, 
Paul said that none of the princes of this world knew about the wisdom of God. Pharaoh didn't know it. And the Pharisees didn't know about the mysteries of God. Nebuchadnezzar didn't know it. And Nicodemus didn't understand. That night he came to Jesus. King Darius didn't know it. Uh, Daniel couldn't uh, explain to him, couldn't get him to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Ahab didn't know about them. Uh, and uh, King Agrippa, though he heard Paul preach and declare the salvation available uh, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, King Agrippa said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. In other words, King Agrippa didn't understand the mysteries. If they, uh, if they had only known the scribes, though they wrote uh, the word of God, many of them didn't understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God because they rejected Jesus. The scribes didn't understand it. The Sadducees were sad because they didn't understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Paul said if they had only known, if they had only understand, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But I close this morning convinced my brothers and sisters uh, that Deacon Rogers knew uh, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He knew uh, that his sin had left uh, within him a crimson stain. And he knew that he was unable uh, to make his own self righteous. And so he knew to trust in the sacrificial lamb of the living God. He knew, my brothers and sisters, that Christ had gone to Calvary. Yes, he went uh, to purchase our soul's redemption. He knew that when Jesus died, he paid a price that no man could pay for himself. Deacon Rogers knew that early that Sunday morning, Jesus got up from a cold, cold grave and stepped out on the resurrection ground. He knew, my brothers and sisters, that in Christ, death would be swallowed up and the victory of grave would be in faith in the living God. He knew, I tell you, and in closing this morning, here it is, uh, Paul wrote it this way. He says, but as it is written, eyes have not seen. Be comforted, June, knowing that uh, this deacon understood what Paul was talking about. Paul said, ear have not heard and neither has it entered into the mind of man what great things that God has in store for those that love him. Yes, the other morning, uh, the heavy load that Ben was carrying got out of control. He found himself slipping and sliding in sickness. He found the weight of his trailer more than he could bear. But thank God today, as he was on his way down, the Lord provided an off-ramp. Yes, as he was on his way down, God made a way for him to take the exit and begin the process going up the hill. Come on. 
Be comforted. Yeah, be sure that our brother Ben, if he could, he wouldn't come back down to this earth. The other, the other morning, when you called, by the time we were talking, Ben was looking over in glory. He had heard about it. He had heard them talk about it. But that Sunday morning, he began to look and see streets paved with gold. <laughs> Jewels and crowns. A crown for his head. A robe for his body. Slippers to put on his feet. Thank you, Sister Rogers, for giving me the privilege to share with this family and yes. with these officers and friends as we celebrate the life of a great man. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, we celebrate the life of one of God's best. Come on, keep clapping your hands. Keep clapping your hands. We, we celebrate the service that he provided to the kingdom of God. We celebrate his life. We are thankful for his life. We're trusting in his Savior. Be not dismayed. God has, still has the whole world in the hollow of his hands. Thank you for this privilege. Pray that God will bless you. God bless you, we are you know, informed by officiate, officiate that because of the heaviness of the rain outside uh, that they want to do the committal here. Um, and so we are going to pause and let the funeral home come and prepare us um, to share in the committal service. and dust to dust looking for the general resurrection and the life of the world to come through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at whose second coming to judge the world in, in glorious majesty um, we surrender to the will of the almighty God he that is able to do all things right. So now we submit ourselves to the glorious power of his majesty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. To Franklin and to all the other pastors, and we want to thank the men and women that are represented here of our fallen cadre. Being. On the behalf of President Joe Biden, have given me the opportunity to present this family with this flag. We can memorize this flag as it flies over our nation. This flag represents the men and women who served in our armed force. The blood that was shed, 13 stripes, is on this flag. 50 stars represent the sky. But let me put it like this. 50 stars represent the seas of Abraham. Uh -uh. I got to get spiritual with you, Scott. <laughs> you might not understand the rest of it. Being deserved and was honored 
by our president and the fallen cadre who have served in our armed forces. I am one my own self have served. And we want to thank the gospel preachers and those that come to say farewell. Sister Cochran, as you exceed this flag, that you glorify this flag because your husband fought the battle, the blood that was shed on Vietnam and also Korea and also the war of 1851. I present you this flag that it would honor you to remember that then have fought for this nation. God bless you. To this family, on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Joe Todd and the entire staff of Mark's Funeral Home, thank you so much for entrusting your loved one in our care. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to serve you during your time of sorrow. We have you to look to the hills from which cometh your help. Realize and know that all of your help comes from God. God bless you and God keep you as our sincere prayer. Let us bow together. Father in heaven, we have come now as far as we can humanly go for our brother. Father, we commend him into your care. We ask a special blessing now upon this family, that you would strengthen them when they are weak, that you would build them up when they're torn down, that you would dry every tear from their eyes and cause them to weep not as those who have no hope because they know the Lord they'll see their loved one again and we thank you God that we've learned today that when the load gets the heaviest you've provided for every one of us an off ramp in Jesus name we pray amen Thank you. 
Thank you. 